While in college, Mark Rick called the Orange Bowl home. As a player, he barely got his feet wet. But now as a coach, Rick isn't afraid to leap into the deep end of the pool. Literally. Since becoming the head football coach at Georgia in 2001, Mark Richt has made a big splash. All right, man, let's settle down. Let's settle down and get started. We've got to be more ready to play this week than we were last week. We've got to be more ready, and we absolutely have got to finish. Green looks, and he's going in the corner for Gibson. has led the Bulldogs to two Southeastern Conference championships. We're champions right now. We are the Eastern champion. Twice been named SEC Coach of the Year and finished second in the country following the 2007 season. Rick has found a home between the hedges. There was a time when he probably thought this is where his football journey would take him. Especially when the former quarterback arrived at the University of Miami in 1979. My plan was start as a freshman, and then my second year I was going to be an All-American. My third year I was going to win the Heisman, I was going to go pro. I had it all planned out, you know, and then Jim started living, kind of living my dream. Jim was Jim Kelly, a quarterback from East Brady, Pennsylvania. We were roommates. I saw him practice. I knew he could throw the ball. I knew he was a smart quarterback. I always prayed to God that I would get the first opportunity to show Nobody Coach Schnellenberger that I'm a good quarterback, that I can't start. And because I knew what Mark Richt was all about. Thank God that Howard Schnellenberger gave me that opportunity against Penn State. In his first start, Kelly led Miami, a 40-point underdog, to a win over Penn State. By the time they were seniors, Rick was still backing up Kelly, as were two freshmen named Vinny Testaverde and Bernie Kozar. But when Kelly separated his shoulder, it was Rick who became the starter. He wasn't in the Jim Kelly League of athletic ability. He still was a gifted quarterback. I saw him as a guy who may have had a chance still to be in the league from a playing perspective because of his knowledge of the game. I think we were three and two during the time I started. So that kind of ended my college career, although I still thought I had a great shot at playing in the NFL anyway because of my superior talent. <laughs> final pass at Miami came during Jim Kelly's pro day. I asked Jim if I could, you know, throw alongside of him. I do remember Mark being there. I remember I threw really well. I remember Mark threw really well. He threw it pretty good, and then I threw it, you know, like really good uh, in my mind anyway. And, you know, I thought if, if they're liking what Jim's doing, they got to be liking what I'm doing. And so I was kind of thinking I was going to get drafted. Rick wasn't drafted, but he did sign a free agent contract with Denver. And the day he arrived, there was big news. Turn on the TV and there was a news flash. John Elway's just been traded from the Baltimore Colts and he's going to Denver. So I called my agent and I was like, can I get out of this thing, you know? That whole camp was about Elway. While Elway took most of the snacks, Rick held a clipboard. If Rick was going to make the team, for the second time in his career, he'd be backing up a future Hall of Famer. But the quarterback pool in Denver was deep. Mark is the guy that I actually had to battle against in Denver to become the third string quarterback. We were kind of both uh, you know, pretty good college players that were considered a lot smarter and we were talented and uh, probably both wanted someday to be a coach. I was the first guy cut that year. The veterans were coming in with their bags. I'm coming out. It was obvious I'd gotten cut and some had to be a receiver. Smart guy. He says, he says, dang, man, you got cut already? And uh, that made me feel good as I took my bus ride to the airport. One year later, Rick was back in Miami, this time trying to make the Dolphins. Not long after being there, uh, I ran into some guy named Dan Marino. For the third time, Rick was stuck behind a future Hall of Famer. But he impressed the Shulas, head coach Don, and assistant Dave. I'll never forget, about a month in, I took a test 
of all the knowledge that we had been given to that point, Dave said, uh, I got good news and bad news. I go, yeah, he goes, I go, what's the good news? He said, well, the good news is you, you scored higher than Marino, Strzok, Jensen. You did a great job on this test, you know. I'm thinking, man, that was good. And uh, he goes, I go, well, what's the bad news? He goes, well, the bad news is, is my dad wants to see you and he wants you to bring your playbook. Tired of competing with NFL quarterbacks, Rick began developing them. We go past 45 choice trail. And the choice if it's wide open. Number 80 is going to be Corey Fuller. He spent 15 years at Florida State mentoring the likes of Casey Weldon and Brad Johnson. And he helped Charlie Ward, number 17, and Chris Wenke, number 16, win Heisman trophies. Following the 2000 season, Rick wondered if he was ready to be a head coach. But the career backup had little history of being offered the top job. I called Coach Rick and, and told him that, uh, that I'd like for him to be the head coach of Georgia. And he turned it down. He absolutely turned it down. I kind of froze, you know, I kind of cheesed up a little bit and said, uh, Coach, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I want the job. And he's like, what are you kidding me? He goes, uh, well, well, we'll give you another 50000 a year, you know. And I was thinking, Coach, it's not the money. I'm just not sure I want the job. At 3 o'clock the next morning, Rick called Vince Dooley and told him he wanted to become a Bulldog. It was the first of many great calls Rick would make at Georgia. And there goes Dooley! Oh, my God, it's a Since Rick's signature win over Tennessee in 2001, the Bulldogs have won nearly 80% of their games. Rick has become the king of Georgia Nation. His wife, Catherine, the hardworking queen. She's our water girl. Um, she's awesome. She's one of the few girls I've met that, that uh, you know, in, in the heat of battle knows when to say something and knows when not to. I'm not a cheerleader, but I like to yell, so I have to put my two cents in, and they'll come over to the table sometimes and I'll say, it's all right, you keep your head up, you stay in the game. And they're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Now it's time for The Water Girl Wants to Know. Hey, Coach, this bar and 10 plates represents 520 pounds, which is how much Jeffrey Owens, our defensive tackle, bench presses. Water Girl wants to know how much you bench pressed. Well, I need to be honest with you, the best bench I ever had, the bench press I ever had was 295 pounds. I wanted to bench 300 pounds so bad, but I never did. Falling just short of his goals was commonplace for Rick as a player. But as a coach, he's determined not to let that happen. Okay. We've got to finish, man. We've got to finish. His mantra is finish the drill. Anything he starts, he wants to finish. That's the mantra for on the field, in the classroom, anything we do, and I think in life, too. It's not just about football. We talk about life. That's what happens in life, too. You thought someone else did it, you get revenge on the wrong guy? We got problems, man. You got to be able to forgive people. When you do something, when you got a job, you got to finish. Keep it going, gentlemen, keep it going. And that's kind of his commitment to the University of Georgia. Is he's going to make sure that he feels it. He's not looking to go anywhere. He's committed, and he's going to finish this job, uh, I think, until he retires. On the football field, Mark Rick never enjoyed the success that his Hall of Fame peers did. But now, he's okay with that. I've actually gotten to the point where I, I'm thinking maybe he was better than me. <laughs> I knew he could throw the football, and I knew that he had the mindset to be a good one, but it just things just didn't work out for him, wrong place, the wrong time. In the long run, it may have uh, resulted in him being the type football coach that he is, uh, because sometimes not the greatest players become the greatest coaches. Y'all ready for a good day? Let's make some plays. And it's those that meet adversity uh, early on and maybe are disappointed in some of their goals as an athlete that they could certainly realize those goals perhaps as a coach. Spirals are optional, baby. I was a pretty cocky, self-centered guy, you know, through my high school and college days. The biggest blessing for me was not to get what I wanted. I 
had to learn to handle disappointment. I had to learn to persevere through tough times, and that was very healthy for me. Ironically, by not getting what he wanted as a player, Mark Rick is able to live a dream as a coach. It's been awesome. It's been awesome.